one. Shield Media is, you know, generally what we refer to access media as well. These are guys that are going to be um, they get preferential treatment when it comes to the big dogs of whatever entertainment industry that we have. So it's in their best interest to to at least remain in the good graces of it. So it doesn't mean that they're going to say everything is good. That's not what it means. It just means that they're not going to be entirely honest with uh, how they review things because their access is dependent on it. What, why on earth would, let's say, Marvel continue to give you the exclusive interviews or early access to their books or anything of that nature if they knew you were going to just grill it every time it came out? You see what I'm saying? So, of course, there's incentive there. Uh, and that can be said for critics as, as well. Uh, they do it like in sparsely. It's like I'll say this movie is, you know, not OK, but in large, I uh, definitely for something that they put a lot of money in. Uh, I'm not saying these guys are getting paid under the table necessarily. I mean, I guess they're getting paid in access, but you get what it is that I'm saying. Uh, with that being said, there was some there's a guy here uh, who was a writer for IGN. I think it was in 24. He was a writer for a year for IGN writing, uh, doing comics. And I think this was like uh, he did. It was like only for a year. But he said video games really aren't my lane. This is a response to IGN's review of Hogwarts Legacy. He says very weird because it, it, it reads like they wanted to give it a bad review but weren't allowed to. If I'm not mistaken, IGN gave it a nine. Um, and it says uh, here, it says, but when I was reviewing comics for IGN about 10 years ago, we were, in fact, not really allowed to give bad reviews. Now, let's, again, take a step back. He himself has given, given unfavorable view. You got to understand kind of the context of what it is that he's saying. He himself, uh, when look myself, had given some unfavorable reviews on, on uh, let's say, uh, on like certain comics. However, the comics were... Like there were these obscure kind of some of it was like ultimate universe. Right. There was some like, you know, those obscure, obscure, like one off comics. There weren't any of the main lines or anything. And you trust me, definitely with Marvel uh, during that era, because you're talking about you're entering into the like all new, all different Marvel now and all that stuff uh, era of, of Marvel. So there was plenty of bad material uh, being released there. But, you know. For the most part, though, it's generally seen as a positive, like the overall, if you like put on aggregate, I guess, all of the reviews that they were doing for uh, these comics. Now, when you say not really allowed, he didn't go into great detail, but I'm guessing that's more so what it means. It's like, yeah, you, you kind of got to take your shots, but ultimately you have to look at them in a bad, bad, uh, more positive light, because if you don't, well, that access is going to get stripped away from you. That's not unsurprising. That's not unsurprising at all uh, uh, for any company, whether it be with comics, definitely with CBR, with all those guys. It's like, dude, you guys, y'all's entire business strategy really is business plan is on you guys getting ad revenue from having the early access. Right. So whether it be with uh, the first review right before everybody gets the book or sees the movie, or plays the game, whatever it is, your access is, like your entire, if you didn't have that access, what do you have? Then you're just competing with everybody else on YouTube who gets the game when it releases and then does, does a review. But at least you have the access of the 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 big companies, okay? So there's plenty of uh, bad material that was going out during that period of time what this guy was talking about but especially now we know but they still like hey this is the this is going going well and when they do say something in the negative light it's it's again little shot here a little shot there but there'll be something else that's more like akin to being i don't want to say objectively bad but they'll make you know it'll be a wad of crap and they'll pretend like it's a diamond they do it all the time and you'll see some of these audience scores, for example, are completely different from their scores. And that should tell you where it is that they're at. They're, what are they doing? They're protecting their own bacon, bro. They're protecting their own bacon. Like, it's what do they have? Think about that. Seriously, if these companies stop doing that, and let's say if they, like, were just reviewing things honestly, 
a hundred percent across the board. Definitely during eras where most of the material was bad. Like most of it. No, well, let's say this: it was either mundane, right, or it was bad, just just straight up terrible. And there was a couple of diamonds that were there, and you still come out of that like, oh, it's okay. Like, okay, bro, you're, you, what are you doing? I know what you're doing. You're protecting your game. That's what this is. That's all the. For those that don't understand why they do it, why wouldn't they? The ad revenue that they're going to get from the articles, the ad revenue that they're going to get from the videos and having the early access is funding their entire shtick. So if that is stripped away from them, oh, let me say this. Why on earth would they do anything that jeopardizes that? Look at it through that lens. Wherever you're viewing the content, I appreciate you. If you enjoyed it, you may be interested in my comic book company, Riververse Comics. Our first book and campaign, I Sum Number One, brought in $3.7 million with tens of thousands of satisfied customers. Visit Riververse.com to check out our store and stay up to date with the latest campaigns from one of the hottest new comic book companies. Also, my first big step towards a parallel economy was the development of my personal website, EricDJuly.com. This entirely replaced my Patreon. Now, if you enjoy this content, please consider becoming a member over at the website. We have an ever-expanding list of perks for various membership tiers, a forum, and a phone app. Some of these perks will even benefit you if you're fans of the Ripperverse. Anyway, I appreciate you so much for being a supporter and or customer. I even got a little love for my haters.